Okay, here's something that I did a video on not too long ago, but I uh, tried to do it on my phone, and uh, it was a new iPhone that I had gotten, and I didn't realize that there was no way after doing the video and editing it that I could save that on the hard drive that doesn't exist on the phone, and I had to literally throw it away. I couldn't even buy a bigger uh, cloud piece and have it uploaded to there or anything like that because it had to be compiled and on mine before it uploaded. So I basically threw this away, and this is from, I don't know, months ago, and I put another piece in one of the other videos here about it, but uh, this is another discussion about the same situation. Here we have a list of predictions and claims of when the second coming of Christ was supposed to be. All of these are, of course, after his date of his death. And if you look at the dates over here on the left, you can see that they start running up pretty quick. For it really only starts at 500 A.D. with Hippolytus of Rome and Sextus Juliana, Julius Africanus and Irenaeus all agreeing on the point that it would happen because of that special date, 500. Of course, there's 666 too and just all kinds of other things that people can pull numbers out of. Well, why are they trying to pull numbers out their butt? Well, um, it's because G what Jesus said didn't happen. Jesus said clearly to his apostles right there in front of him, they pulled him aside when he was at the Mount of Olives and said that he was going to die and resurrect and the Son of God and all this type of stuff. And they're like, dude, what the hell's going on? What are you talking about? When, are you, when is this going to happen? And he goes, verily I say to you, it'll happen during this generation. And this generation is not, this generation that's listening now, the generation he was talking about, of course, was 2,000 years ago, and he was talking to his prophets, but people have taken that idea every time they hear about all this, and they get this feeling because of the way that they've been deluded into believing in the Bible, that somehow it's probably going to happen during your lifetime, and be ready and prepare yourself. Which is a way of making you get more strict in your life in some way and so on. And I can see the fallacies of the way that works and how that does things and tries to snap people into it and stuff. But of course, going through the way that humanity has, we're long past and had the training wheels come off long ago. But there are people that still believe this is going to happen. My ex-wife was one of them who actually, whenever watching those movies where... Uh, they they acted like it's happening in a modern day and they're all flying airplanes and all of a sudden the people just start disappearing whatever the name of that movie was and there was another one and of course it is god dead and all these other movies that you watch to try to revalidate yourself whenever you know in fact it's just showing you here it just never happened and in fact the whole thing about he's going to come back and yay so a weird thing here people if you looked at it well, no matter how great it sounds with Jesus and his telling and, and his things that he went through and tells everybody about and the way to look at it and all those good things, is that at the end of it, he told you some prediction and stuff and it didn't happen. Just like all the other prophets before, and actually what they tried to do with this story was take what all the other prophets said before in the Old Testament and wrap it up into this guy and then say, this, see, here he is. Well, by the time they were getting people to worship this, it had already failed. So, lo and behold, they had people right at the start who had to feign a cognitive dissonance and believe that it might happen this generation and so on. And how many generations have people sat and prayed and all kinds of things and thought that it was the second coming during their lifetime? I mean, I keep telling you that if it happens during our lifetime or whenever it does, it's probably going to end up being a comet or an asteroid that hits the Earth and screws it off pretty bad like what's happened before, like what did with the dinosaurs and everything, which of course ruins the whole Bible idea too. And if we do have anybody to live out of that, you can bet that they're going to come out of that at the end and go, see, God did this thing. And are we going to be trapped in another 10,000 years of stupid and then sit here while asteroids are swinging right by us again like he's throwing snowballs at us. And just keep our thumb up our ass and go, well, if it ever happens, it's God's will. Rather than turning around and realizing that we could do something about it. 
we talk about it all the time, the space program and all these things and stuff, you know, about what we could do, and you don't want to blow one up real close to us, because it'll be like a shotgun effect. Well, one thing that they know, the kinetic punch of these things, if they were to bust it apart or put a few nuclear things in front of it to blow it up and it scattered it into pieces, we'd actually get a meteor shower and a lot of them would hit the earth and maybe some big chunks the size of cars and it would do some big damage over a large area. But it, it well, depending on the size of the thing we're talking about originally here, but it wouldn't do a pow kinetic punch that would just screw off something like London and its old surrounding area, but then the fallout from that would screw us all up for generations and just ruin the whole thing. But we would just be sitting and watching it like we we're supposed to. Like that movie Don't Look Up that was from a year or two ago where once they found out, then people started trying to lie to them and tell them it wasn't happening and all this stuff and they had a way to fix it and you were believing in the government and stuff. It's kind of a weird movie, you know, and, and to believe that people would go that far with it and I swear to you, whenever I was growing up, if they would have made the movie, people would be like, God, this is stupid. But in a modern day, people are watching it and they're going, yeah, I bet you could get some people to act like this. And oh, no. And it really shows you what's going on now. Just a couple of decades later and the way the people have been twisted into thinking. And that's another problem, too, that probably should be addressed, but I can't talk about it in this video. In fact, you're not supposed to talk about it. So look at this list. We're starting here, and what you'll find is that there's some real famous people that are on this list. And of course, usually it's about certain days that they found, or I found this thing in Daniel, and I added them up, and I come up with this number, that number, and so on. But it goes from 500 to 793 to the 1st of January, 1000, 1260, 1370, you know. Uh, Botticelli here t tells you one, there's people of well note here but then all of a sudden it jumps up to 1500 1600s 1700 henry archer well, let's just stop right there for a second it acts like well there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve or thirteen predictions all between there but you'd have to realize that the predictions were there from the start and then people were led to believe really every generation and so in this first little run up to 1700 years, we're missing hundred, if not hundreds, of points where people did the same type of thing. And I'm talking, not talking about the guy standing on the street corner telling you the sky's falling and everybody's fixing to go under, but somebody of prominence and usually attached to a church had it all figured out. It really makes you wonder how after they fail the prophecy, how that church would still be in, but then how those people could go to another church, even if that was in effect, and turn around and try to believe somebody else and see if I could get you to lie about a number and get me to believe something and try to do it towards the end of my life so I can have this false belief for as long as possible, please. Which is crazy. And another form of cognitive dissonance and people searching for something that's actually already happened. In fact, when it was written down, it had already happened. But people don't want to go with the idea that it says clearly Titus rides in on a white horse after his four horse chariot guys come in and do all this stuff. And that's what the allegory about Revelations is about. No, they don't want to go with that. Well, Rome did take it over. All these things happened. They were gods on this earth and so on and da-da-da. And son of God. And that happened to him too. So there, there you go. That's, 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 but that's, that's pagan. Pagan really just means agriculturist. And you've been led to believe that this is the only religion and all others are fake that you've turned around and dismissed all of them. The sad thing about that is when you put it all together and you notice that this feeds off the other ones in such a way, you're like, well then, well then how could it be true? Like they go around telling, oh, it's all lies, but we got the same stories in here. We twitch it all up, put it into one and ta-da, but ours is real. You're like, are you trying to be serious? It gets to that point. It, 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 it's sad that it gets to that point. But then again, if you don't know, you don't know. And you're just trying. And there, there are people, seriously, that I've gotten going down a road and they realize it. And then all of a sudden they start getting this feeling and then they tell me they don't want to know anymore. They'd rather just stop. And I go, I don't want to ruin your faith or anything else. And he goes, oh my God, I think you already have. And I'm like, wow, well, you wouldn't believe how much more there is. But if you want to see something more, watch my videos about it or whatever. Or ask me any questions or whatever about it. But 
look, I'm not here to just ruin your whole ideals or anything else. I'm just trying to show you the reality. And he, he was all like, I know, and I appreciate it, dude, but it's just wow. And I go, I know it's kind of devastating. Usually when I get to about the point that I did with this guy, it seems to be a little too much information, and then I've got to stop. Because if I go any farther, you're not going to retain anything, and also it gets confusing. The only thing that allow it to run on further is if you ask me questions that are running your mind to where I can make connections back to it. But you can only actually do a few more of those, and then the drain's clogged a little bit, and you have to wait for a while for it to all be consumed and put in place, and then go, got any more questions? And I'm like, i got a handful here, bud. I've had people pull out a tablet that's got them written down or whatever off of it. And then, of course, there's some in there that are real leading questions like, dude, you're, you're, you're trying to hang on with this question right here. And if you said it like this, is that the same thing? And he goes, yeah, kind of. And I go, okay, so you realize that's a leading question because you're trying to hang on. And I understand that. But here's the reality of that. And it just falls apart, you know, and, and and then this just falls apart, and that just falls apart. Now, the next thing you know, you're looking back here, you go, look at this great house. And it reminds me of the Daffy Duck cartoon where the house blows up and he's holding the doorknob. And then he goes, hey, bub, I know what you need. You need a house to go with this doorknob. Because that's all that's left. Look at these people here as it goes from the 1700s all the way through. And some of these people are people of well-known and renowned during that time. And usually preachers, like I'm saying, and even popes and everything else. And Joseph Smith of the Latter-day Church. And I could read about how what he says here and everything, but that's just going to draw this out. You can look at it yourself. And the point really being here is they were really behind this, and it really didn't happen. Well, they got it all figured out, and God told me this. Really, did he? Well, then he lied again. Wow, how many times has he lied here? Well, I, we're in the 70s now, and we're still going up. And uh, first time I saw this list in a book, it went on a couple of pages, where you can see that this goes on quite a bit. And it's been all the way through the you know, 2012 and all those type of situations, but there's even future predictions Somebody has pulled up something that these Christians believe the Revelation sign says it's 2024. Somebody else says it's going to happen shortly after 2025, 2028, 2057 by these people else already. But it's just, um, it's sad. I'm going to ask you a question here now and see if I can get through to the point again from another point of view like I do. At what point here, uh, what number into this? Would you end up having a boy cried wolf syndrome happen to you? Is it first couple of times? Is it five? Do you think people would have gone ten? Because we're not even off the first page and this thing goes eight pages down or whatever it did. So at what point would this be boy cried wolf? If I said 20, it would just sound stupid to go that high with it, but you can see people here going through 20, through 30, through 40, through 50, through 60, through 70. Different dates that this is all supposed to happen on. Again, I always say that if it's going to happen, it's going to be a meteor that's going to come and hit the planet or whatever. That's the most likely... Or something that's going to be like a, a Yellowstone blows up and it causes such a problem that it ruins the world. But in that situation, we make it through pretty good, but everything goes down and crops and so on like that. So there's a nightmare that's after that that I don't want to talk about for a few generations, really, before it can even get back up and going as a shadow of its former self. But if we took an impact from something that's not much bigger than a football stadium come hurling in at 30 or 40,000 miles an hour or more, it could cause so much of a problem and uplift of crap into the atmosphere that it would be much worse than that volcano. If it broke apart in a couple of pieces while it was coming at us and hitting three different spots, but they were all pretty huge, it would pretty much devastate this planet back to not the Stone Age, but the nothing except for primordial life and some creatures and would have to all restart from there.
The sad thing is, if any humans lived through that, they would probably come out of it saying, See, God got mad. And here we go back with this primordial idea, because we're knocked back to the Stone Age. You might as well think like them. Right? It's kind of pitiful when you look at it. It's cognitive dissonance, where if somebody's able to just dismiss something like this, or, or, or see it plainly right in front of them, and not be able to put two and two together. And again, the thing that I say is that these people are trained to dismiss it. And you always hear that thing about, well, if somebody says something that's against it or whatever I say, that's the devil talking to you. Which is hilarious when you look into that and the truth and reality of all any of this. And so these people get trapped in an occult. And it happens usually whenever you're young enough that you don't know any better and it becomes part of your world that you don't want to let lo loose of. This time of year kind of shows something special because there's this Santa Claus guy that's the same kind of way that knows what you're doing and knows when you're sleeping or bad or good or all that situation and somebody takes them away from you and says, it's just your parents. But you're not going to take this one away because no, you can't prove that he doesn't exist and next thing you know, double negatives get interjected and all kinds of things. The truth and reality of it all I'm currently in the background watching a whole lot of apologetics and also a whole lot of people going against that and some channels that I've found now that they literally pull on experts that are picking it apart with one certain criteria going after it. And it's amazing. Really something that I, I learned about and they go, here's a couple of examples of it, you know, and so I think it's more evident. Well, then there's this other guy that specializes in it, and he shows 30 things and really goes deep to the point that you're like, oh, yeah, and then it keeps going and going and going, kind of like I do or whatever. I'm feeding off that a little bit, too, but uh, look at how many times people had made a prediction that something's going to happen and it doesn't. And it's about God. Hey, you know the one that's not on this list is Jesus himself. Because he said that he was going to come back during this generation. And this generation shall not pass. And whoopsie. People try to write that off and say, oh, well, that happened esoterically. That happened spiritually. Now he's at the right side of God. He wasn't before. And all these things, you know, don't, don't even get me started about what I heard about each one of these times where they're wrong. And they're apologetic for how it could be right. And everything, but it generally puts it off to a spiritual node. Uh, that it somehow partially did happen. In fact, people believing that, like, oh, most of the scrolls and the seals have been opened and we're right there. Well, that was supposed to have happened 2,000 years ago. You're just going to wait on that last one and be like, and, and everybody's sweating it out and everything. No, well, in your mind, do you have something like that going on? That'd be terrible if you're led to believe that you have to sweat it out all your life on some bullshit that's not even happening. And how many generations have we gone here with these people on the side here making these predictions with everybody hearing it around them? A lot of people becoming deluded to, to believe it. And then lo and behold, everybody looks at it as stupid. How many times before we cry wolf? Hasn't all this been over with a long time ago and people are just not ready for it somehow to go away well we all know santa claus doesn't exist yeah well that's the way it was from the first but we're going to keep it and we're going to do things with it mm, that's funny uh, christianity was supposed to be that way too and then people tried to take it literal and it turned into what it did or most of it that was supposed to be allegory they've turned into saying that it's exactly you know you just don't understand it and god works in mysterious ways and all kinds of silly apologetics Anyhow, just to look at it here on these predictions and future predictions that are also, I'll tell you now, aren't going to happen on the day they say no matter what, unless they've already seen an asteroid coming this way and made the prediction of the day, for it doesn't work that way. And I think we all know it. In fact, I think the real Christians that are totally devout in it know it too. And if you showed them this list, they would be like, ah, but then they would go back to maybe... And during our generation, and da-da-da, somehow they're able to go back to that and go, but there might be a wolf one day. Waiting on a wolf. Peace.